Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-37. Our last episode featured the new group heading into the wilderness, only to be discovered by a knoll group. A fierce battle led to victory with only minor wounds sustained by the group. The party quickly learned that this was the first time their newest charge, Karina, had taken a life. While she attempted to shrug off the encounter, the group could tell that the young woman took it poorly. We rejoin the group as the sun begins to set in the hills. Hey, hey, my legs are getting tired, big man, stated Bolger the sailor. Mind if we take a break for the day? Fargus Stouthard came to a stop and looked into the faces of his companions. Seeing fatigue in their eyes, he nodded in agreement and found a small clearing. Each member of the group went out 200 paces before returning to the center. None reported seeing signs of gnolls or other nasties, and they agreed on making camp for the night. Cabe and Karina collected firewood while Fargus and Sister Elaine broke out the supplies given to them by the sea captain. A silent meal was completed as the fire picked up in a small hole dug in the ground. Fargus and Bolger had collected some brush to disguise their positions and the group decided to set up a guard schedule. As a full moon rose, the group spoke with Bolger and inquired about his background. The gnome explained that he had grown up in a small fishing village off the Gaffis Strait. He didn't mind being a fisherman, but wanted to see more of the world. On his Freedom Day, he sought out passage on a ship. Cave and Lady Irena looked puzzled and inquired what a Freedom Day was. Bulger explained that when a gnome comes of age, a party is held and the individual is allowed to decide on his destiny. The sailor explained it was more and everyone understood. Bulger pointed out that he started as a lackey on the vessel called the Redemption and worked on five or six other ships until he found the Venture. He explained that he was quite happy with Captain Clausen, but became choked up when the thought of the vessel blowing up entered his mind. He stuttered and stammered but could not continue. He asked for each of the group's stories and found them to be quite an interesting collective. Karina dampened the mood when she inquired about a missing member of the group. I'm told that you had a halfling in your circle. What happened to him? The group became sullen and Fargus cleared his throat as he patrolled the perimeter. <coughs> Welby. <coughs> Welby O'Toole was his name. He is no longer with us. As the man's voice trailed off, Bolger, sensing something was amiss, created more tension when he asked if the group got rid of him because he was a demi-human. Angered looks caused him to silence his criticism, and Sister Elaine spoke first. Welby was our friend, sailor boy. None of us care about your size, only the size of your heart. That halfling had the largest heart of all of us. An awkward silence fell over the group until it was broken by the gnome. I'm sorry. I spoke out of turn. All of my life I have been judged according to my height, or lack thereof. I am used to people making judgments about me, just because I can't reach things on a shelf. I am sorry, and I am sorry for your loss. Cave Silvertongue tossed another log into the fire and chuckled, which grew into laughter. The group looked at him as if he had lost his mind. He noticed their strange looks and waved them off. <sighs> I was just thinking... We are together because of that sawed-off thief, he mused. The original members thought for a moment and also began to laugh. Fargus shook his head and remembered how he nearly got them all into trouble their very first day on the ferry. A few minutes more and those riders would have probably had our heads, he said, shaking his head. He continued to circle the camp looking for danger and bristled as a wolf's howl pierced the night sky. Karina shrunk into her blanket and looked concerned. Just a wolf, nothing more, was the response from Fargus. The young woman bit her lip 
and tossed aside the blanket and began to circle the camp. The ranger watched her as she peered out into the darkness with only the moon to illuminate the landscape. She stared out in the direction of the howling and was surprised as a hand clamped over her mouth and held her shoulder. Fargus leaned in and silently pointed out into the darkness. Initially, Karina didn't see anything, but following the moving hand of the ranger, she finally observed a dog-like creature scurrying across the landscape. She began to speak, but Fargus raised a finger and moved his direction backwards a bit. At this point, the young woman noticed three smaller figures chasing the wolf. For several moments, she peered out trying to determine what was going on. Moments passed as she began to hear a light growling that sounded like a puppy. Fargus released his grip on the young woman, who asked if it was a wolf. Fargus nodded, pointing out that it was a female and a few puppies. A smile crossed the woman's face and she thanked the ranger. He nodded and told her that the creatures could still bring down a person, and worse, when it is a mother and her pups. The pair stood facing each other and sadness filled Fargus' eyes. I'm sorry about today. We, uh, we didn't know that you had, well, that you had never. But the woman held her fingers to his lips and told him no apology was necessary. Life is hard, she said. You roll with the punches or you lay down. Those are the only choices. The large man nodded and pointed out that there was another option. Quizzically, Karina looked at him to which he replied. You now have friends that you can lean on. We help each other out, young one. Fargus moved off to continue his patrol, and Karina thought about what he had said. She reflected on her life and came to the understanding that for ten years, the only person she could count on was Dingus. Looking back to the west, she realized that she may never see him again. Moving back to the campfire, she noticed the group laughing as Cave had told a joke. Karina smiled softly. She now had friends. The woman rejoined the group as Cabe relieved Fargus on watch. As night fell, each member of the group pulled blankets over themselves and settled in for their first night on the frontier. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, Thanks for listening.